If you're struggling to wrap your head around on how recursion works, you're not alone. It's a difficult concept. In this video, I'll show you how recursion works in JavaScript using human understandable language. Recursion is just what it sounds like. It's a function calling itself repeatedly. Sounds familiar, right? Well, a loop can also do the same job, but in cases where you have a problem that can be divided into smaller sub-problems, recursion is usually the better option. Let's start off with a really simple example. Let's just define a function which would console log every number from the given number up to one. So let's define the function itself. So function countdown, let's say, let's give it the parameter of n and let's console log the n. And then this is where recursion really shines. Uh, let's call the function itself, but now let's give it an argument of n minus one. So let's call it and the argument will be n minus one this time. And so theoretically, this should work. This should uh, console log every number from the given number up to whatever, right? Uh, well, let's see where it goes wrong. Um, countdown, let's say of um, eight and let's run it. And this is where we will eventually run into an infinite loop. Uh, this will just continue logging numbers up to minus infinity because we don't have a base case and the base case is simply the condition where the function should stop running and so in this case we wanted the, the function to count down to one and so if we hit zero this is our base case we just return and so we can see an, the example right here where it correctly counts down from eight to one. Now let's inspect how all of this works under the hood. So the first time we ran the countdown function, it had an argument of eight. It is not zero, therefore we do not return immediately. And so we log the eight to the console. And then we call the countdown function itself with an argument of eight minus one. And in this case, it's seven and it's definitely not zero. So it doesn't return. Once again, it gets logged to the console. And then we call the same function again with an argument of six and seven minus one is six. And so we do this over and over again up until we reach uh, the argument of zero. And in that case, we just return. So the function stops executing. Therefore, we get the result of, well, just uh, all of the numbers from eight to one logged to the console. Now, let's take a bit of a more advanced example. And in this example, we'll try to calculate the factorial of a given number using recursion. And a factorial is simply the product of all numbers up to a given number. Okay, so let's define the function first. The function factorial accepts a parameter of n. And let's first define the base case. So if n is equal to one, let's just return one because there's nothing to multiply one with. That's the last number. And this is where the beauty of recursion really kicks in. So in the other case, let's return n times factorial of n minus one. Now let's test it out by console logging the factorial, let's say of uh, four. And if we run it, indeed, we get 24. Okay, so let's just inspect what happened under the hood. So factorial of four gets called. It's, well, four is not equal to one, so it doesn't return one. It returns four times factorial of three because, well, four minus one is three. And so factorial of three gets called. Uh, three is not equal to one. Or it returns three times factorial of two. And so two is not equal to one. It once again returns two times factorial of one and n is equal to one in this case. So it returns one. and in this whole sequence, we get a calculation of four times three times two times one. And in the end result, we get, well, 24. Hope this helped you gain a better understanding of how recursion works. Now go hack away on lead code or code wars to sharpen your recursion skills.